potential. Nothing has been ripped out of them. So, one of the first shocks I have here is that people can be virgin, but foolish, as they can be virgin, but wise. And so you can see that the virginity, the barrenness of the land, the fact that it's a nice spoilt on an unspoilt beach, long stretches of white sandy unspoilt beaches does not necessarily mean prosperity is gonna come. For it can be virgin, but foolish. Nobody is harnessing its potential for good. So we are being told that ten virgins went to meet this bridegroom. But five of them were wise and five were foolish. And I want to hope, I want to hope that Jesus Christ was not giving ratios here or percentages. Because if he were, then it means half is foolish and half is wise. And this parable ends by the foolish being thrown away into an eternity that you and I would not like to spend our eternity in. Because eternity is eternity. It's everlasting. It's a life without end. It's perpetual. There is no respite. So let's hope he was not dealing with ratios here, one to one. He was not dealing with percentages, 50-50. He wasn't doing fractions, half-half. Because what that means is that in every community, maybe half would go and half will be lost. I'm sure that's not what he was saying. At least I hope so. In any case, if he was, I would rather want to be amongst the five wise. And I'm sure so would you. We continue in verse 3. Those who were foolish took their lamps, but took no extra oil with them. The lamps themselves already had oil. That's how the oil goes through the wick, and when it is ignited by a match or something, then it, the wick is burning slowly, preferably with the blue flame, sometimes with the orange flame, and then light comes. But the foolish ones did not take ex oil. In verse 4, it says, but the wise took oils in their vessels with their lamps. Verse 5. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. It doesn't say that only the five foolish slumbered and slept. All of them. Because the assumption was that, well, he probably will come at 9 p.m. to take his bride home. He'll come at 8 so I'm sure my candle, my lamp, would last that long. At most, he may come at 10 or 11. That is called a dangerous assumption. Some people assume that life will treat them well because they have an uncle presently in power, an auntie that works for a multilateral, an international body. Or maybe it's their townswoman in power or their community man in power. They assume that maybe their family name, their complexion, their tribe or something would always be a plus for their life. Those are dangerous assumptions because there is nothing as constant as change. And ladies and gentlemen, if I knew for exact certainty the times and the seasons of life, I think I would relax. But the reason why we are always on the go, preparing, planning, evaluating, re-evaluating, the reason why companies have R&D as one of their greatest companies they are researching and developing the reasons why companies, institutions, and parastatals should have an M&E department, a monitoring and evaluating department is because 
There's competition. You can't just assume that because I was great yesterday, I'll be great today. That because it worked yesterday, it will work today. Because there are outside forces and parameters that are outside of the power of my control and your control that necessitate that on a daily, regular cycle, or even if not daily, on a regular cycle, I monitor progress. I check my health. I just don't assume that because I was fine last year, I'm fine this year. I check my health. I check my academic life. I check my financial life. I check my mental life. I check many things. Because while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. Nobody could tell when the bridegroom was going to come. That is not given to anybody in life. It's the prerogative of God himself. In some very strange circumstances, sometimes things can happen. But generally in life, nobody knows. So it says they all slumbered and they slept. The five wise and the five foolish. Verse 6 says, and at midnight there was a cry. And the cry said, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. There is, um, this is all Hebraic, Jewish, you know, the bridegroom was coming, then the maidens will go and meet him and come with him, and he takes his bride, and then they go into their honeymoon. It says, Then all those virgins arose. They woke up, maybe wiped their eyes. This was midnight. They had slumbered. They had slept because they had waited at 8 p.m. He didn't come. 9 p.m. They didn't come. Somebody told them it would happen at 10, but it was an assumption. It was a false alarm. It was a dangerous assumption. So they all slept and their lamps went down. By midnight, they were fast asleep. It says, then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And verse 8 says, and the foolish virgin said to the wise, Please give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered and said, No, lest there should not be enough for us and for you. So you go to those who sell and buy for yourselves. So they went. Verse 10 says, while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready, those who were ready, those who were ready, went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. I repeat that. And the door was shut. Verse 11, two more verses. Afterward, the foolish virgins came also, and they were knocking on the door saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. Please, open to us. Verse 12 says, but he answered. He heard them from behind the locked door, behind the shut door. And he answered, and he said, most assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. I do not know you. And every parable, as you know, is a short story with a deep meaning. And Jesus Christ gives the meaning. He says, watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Basically, do not be left behind. Do not be shut out. So what are some of the thoughts? Does God hate people? No. Has God planned that some people will be shot out? No. Do people make wrong assumptions in life? Yes. Do people make dangerous assumptions in life? Yes. Are there people who are just too lazy to go the extra mile and stretch whilst other people are doing it? Yes. Are there people who think that other people who are working hard are foolish, they are overzealous, you know, life they must enjoy life. They must party every weekend. Are there people like that? Yes. Does life give them what they sowed? Yes, because what you sow is what you reap. What I sow is what I reap. What we sow is what we reap. Individual, community, national, global. What we 